Hey guys, welcome back to another video with InfoSec Pat. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Blue Machine from Hack the Box. This is an awesome box to learn different vulnerabilities and different scanning. So, in my case, when you logged into your machine, I just go to Machines and I went to Retired and I just searched Blue and we're going to be walking through this machine today. So, if you connect it to your VPN, you can go ahead and connect to your VPN. Make sure you can ping your IP address. In my case, let's check that out. I think I just did and I'm able to get to that machine. So that's good news. So I'm able to, whoops, make this a little larger. So I'm able to get to that machine, all right? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do a Nmap scan, but first, before we do that, like I always say, please like, subscribe, share. Sorry that I don't have no picture on my, uh, on my screen today. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on with my camera. I have to troubleshoot that some other time, but you know, I just had to put some content out there. It's been a few weeks. So here it is. So what we're gonna do is run an Nmap scan, okay? So we're gonna do Nmap, and the first thing I like, oh, actually, before we do an Nmap scan, I wanna make a directory called blue, okay? And then cd into blue. And then we can see there's nothing in that directory yet. So we're gonna do an Nmap scan now, and we're gonna do Little c, big S, uh, version scan, and then actually I want to put the output to, I'll just call it blue.txt, okay? And in my case, let me see, I, I jotted the IP down on another screen. Let me see if I can just copy and paste this. Copy, paste, perfect. All right, so we'll let that do its thing, and while that does its thing, We'll uh, give that a moment. There's not much we can do until this gives us the feedback that we need. Like I would say, like, you know, I really enjoy making these videos. These, this has always been, you know, a fun time for me to actually take the time and give you guys the easiest way to walk through these boxes, to learn, to have fun, and all that good stuff. So hopefully you guys are enjoying as much as I am, right? And that's the most important thing, enjoying each other, enjoying the learning journey, and all that good stuff. So we'll give that a few moments. And this blue box, it has some you know, vulnerabilities such as like the eternal blue. I believe I did a box on my, on my channel. It wasn't the hack the box blue, but it was like a similar box that I think I created. And this has simil a similar vulnerability to the, uh, I believe the legacy box as well, which I want to put a video on that one as well. I do have a, uh, a list of boxes that I want to go through for this channel, for this little playlist, so stay tuned for that. And whenever I have a few minutes to make these videos, obviously I'll go about and making these videos. So that's, that's what matters, right? So we'll give this a few moments. I am VPNed in, so it's going to be a little, take a little more time than if you're like using the poem box on Hack the Box. I just think it's easier to use my own box because I can use my own tools and I know where everything is on my machine and it's just easier for myself, right? So I guess we'll give this a few more moments. While this is uh, going through its thing, let's just go out to Google and I'll show you some stuff, right? So if we do eternal blue, uh, e, if I spell it right, eternal, blue, and then we can just put uh, NSA, right? So the NSA, actually, like if we go on Wikipedia, we can see here that Eternal Blue is a cyber, a cyber attack exploit developed by the U.S. You know, Nation Security Agency, which is the NSA. It was leaked by the Shadow Brokers, the hacker group in 2017, which is pretty crazy, right? So, you know, one month after Microsoft released patches, you know, one month after Microsoft released the patches to, to this vulnerability. So this was a big one. And in May 12, 2017, the worldwide WannaCry ransomware used this exploit to you know, attack unpatched computers, meaning computers that aren't uh, updated or patched. So you have to be very careful with these exploits. 
or with these machines out there that's susceptible to these uh, vulnerabilities. Perfect. So this is done. This is our output. As we see here, we have port 135, 137, 445, and all these other cool ports out there. So obviously, uh, 135 is NetBIOS, 139 is SMB, and 445 is also running on here as well. That's for you know shares and all that good stuff. So this can be useful, why? Because we can enumerate a lot of these ports, right? We can do a lot of stuff with these ports. We can use applications like SMB Map, SMB Client, Enum for Linux, uh, I think it's RPC client. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of tools that we can utilize for these three these three ports out here, right? So what we can do now, we can try to use Nmap to enumerate a specific port. And then we can use a vulnerability scanner built into Nmap, you know, which is like the, uh, the N uh, NCE, which is the Nmap scripting engine, right? So let's clear this now, and we can do an LS. We have our scan results there. So what I want to do, I want to go ahead and do an Nmap, and I want to do a dash P now, and I want to do 445, because we're going to enumerate just this port, right? Let me, let me copy my IP address so I can have the right IP, okay? And then we can do dash dash script, right? So with this script, all right, first let me type. Sorry. And then um, equals, so what, what script are we gonna utilize? We can use the SMB dash vuln. So, oh, vuln, if I can spell. So, and then it's gonna be the MS 17.0, uh, MS 17-010 dot MSE. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this, we can go out to Google and just run it. This is gonna check for the MS170 uh, exploit, and it's vulnerable to that right here, as we can see, right? So that's, that, that, that's good news for us as an attacker that we can utilize this to exploit this system, right? The next thing we can do, we can load up MS, MSF console, so we're gonna load this up and we're gonna search for Eternal Blue on this machine. So we'll give that a moment to load up and then we'll search for Eternal Blue. I'm gonna do a clear here so we can start from the top. So we're gonna do search Eternal Blue, Eternal Blue. All right, so we can see out here, excuse me, we can see that there's exploits, there's exploits, there's an auxiliary, there's an auxiliary, etc. So we can see that this auxiliary here for SMB, let me actually make this one tab smaller. Let me see if I can hit the up arrow again. That's still showing. Okay, that's fine. So let's clear out this and let's do it again. So it starts from a clean slate. All right, so what we can do is run this auxiliary to see if it's susceptible to this vulnerability, okay? So let's give this a shot. So the auxiliary, we're gonna use three. And then what, what can we do here? We can do show options. And then we can set the R host. Let's set R host to, uh, I think I already have it pasted. Whoops, not that. Let's see if I have the IP address pasted. Nope, I don't. Okay, let me copy this IP address again and paste it in here. And that's the R host, right? So the next thing we could do is try to exploit. Exploit. And we'll give that a moment to run its thing. So it says host is likely vulnerable to MS17010, Windows 7 Professional SP1, which is Service Pack 1. So it scanned it. It was able to find out that this machine was susceptible to internal blue which is good news, right? So now what we can do, we can run the exploit now. Now it's time to exploit this system to see if we can get a shell. So let's clear this. Let's hit back, clear. And now we can use a, so, so let's go up arrow, search eternal blue. 
So now we're going to actually use the exploit. Okay. So what exploit we're going to use? We're going to use zero. So we're going to use the exploit Windows SMB MS17010 internal blue. So let's use zero. Okay. That's the easiest way because I'm lazy and I don't want to type all that stuff out. Why, why work hard when you can work smart, right? So now when, once we're in here, we can do my favorite show options to see the options that we have available. Now we can do set our host, okay? And my our host, let's see if I can paste this. Of course, why did it not copy? Okay, let me copy this one more time. Whoops. And let's paste it here and boom. So now we have the our host available. So now we can do show options again, and we can see here everything is good, right? We have our payload that's defaulted, which is good for us. That's what we can use. We can set that up. Next, we have to set the L host. So set L host. And in my case, let's see what my L host is. That's really small. So let's do if config. And my L host is going to be the tunnel zero because I'm VPN in, and this is what it has to come back and talk to me, right? So let's, oops, sorry about that. And let's paste that in here. And we do show options. And we can see everything is pretty much set. We have L host, 444 is pretty fine for me. Let's hit exploit. And let's see if we get any luck. If it does, we can continue to look for the flags and keep our fingers crossed. Let's give this a moment. And while this goes, I want to take a sip of water. Okay. All right. So it looks like it's successful. Bada bing, bada boom. We are in. So while we're in here, let's make this a little bigger. So now what we can do is just, you know, if it's a Windows box, we can do sysinfo. And we can see that it's a Windows 7 machine. It's a 64-bit architecture. It's a part of a workgroup domain. And it's running x 64, 64-bits, 64 uh, a 64-bit version of Windows. Okay? So now the first thing we can do is try to find the user flag. Since we are on this box, normally, since it's Harris PC, if you're familiar with Windows, we should be able to figure this out where I think the flag would be is normally on the desktop. So what we're gonna do is cat, and I'm gonna use quote, uh, the, uh, these colons, and then C colon backslash users, and where it's Harris, right? Harris, and then it's gonna be desktop, that's where I think it's gonna be. And then if it's a user, I'm just gonna put user.txt. Okay, and then I want to close it because we have spaces. And bada bing, bada boom, there goes our flag. So this is the flag right here. So we can copy this flag, go into hack the box, and submit the flag. Let's go submit flag. I believe I already did this box, but let's see, I was about a three. Submit flag. It's already been pwned, so that's cool with me. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so that was the first flag. Now we can get the root flag. The root flag is normally going to be in the administrator's, the administrator's account because it's a Windows box. So pretty much what I would guess, where I would guess would probably be the admin's account on the desktop and be root.txt. So let's just give that a go. Okay, shall we? So C colon backslash. Uh, users, administrator, desktop, and then root.txt. And let's close it. And bada bing, bada boom, we have our flag here. Like I said, I already pwned it, so if I copy this, it's going to give me the same error. I don't know what's going on with my mouse, but if we copy this section, we can go back out here, paste it, and you should complete this box. So that's pretty much the walkthrough of the blue box. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to like, 
share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, guys, have an awesome day. And Thanksgiving's coming up, so have a very happy Thanksgiving with your family and everyone. And happy holidays coming up. Thank you.